I don't want them to land on my husband. He's just trying to work around all this. So these two swarms are only about four feet away from each other. They're probably cast out of the same hive. Um, the smaller swarm Looks like it's taking to the air. So they may be on their way out. Let's see. There we go. So the queen must have taken flight or they are, are part of this swarm and they're just a little bit lost and they'll re-congregate closer to their queen. But they're definitely taking flight right now. So I'm gonna focus on taking this bigger swarm and we may be able to catch up with this smaller one later. So I'm gonna do what I did before to catch the last ground swarm, which was stick a brood box with some frames straight over them and let them crawl up onto the frames. Here we are, right in the sky here. They may settle back down over here. It would be great if they went ahead and settled down close to where I have the hive set up already because that's a lot shorter of a distance that I would need to move them at that point. The swarm that I caught, that I almost hit with my lawnmower, is right over here. They're really not far from the apiary. I'm gonna have to move them soon. I have my swarm catcher set up over at the pond. And I'm a little bit hoping that they go ahead and just make their home in there. Doesn't really look like they're heading that direction though. I don't want them to land on my husband. He's just trying to work around all this. Okay, it looks like they may be starting to congregate on the ground again right here. So I'm pretty confident that they're gonna go ahead and land right here. So, I'm gonna go ahead and collect my smaller box and we're gonna try the same collection method that seems to be working for ground swarms. <laughs> on the ground over here, they're going to sense that their queen is not close by. And the workers that are inside with the queen are going to be beating their wings, putting their nasonoff glands in the air, and letting the lost bees over here know that this is their new home. So in a short time yet, we should see them just marching in. I 
I definitely want to make sure that I'm giving ample time for the queen to climb up onto one of those frames. If I go ahead and move this box too early and the queen remains here on the grass, all the bees that I've collected in the box are going to march right back outside the box to be with her. Actually, see a queen. Holy cow, I see a queen. Queens can fly. Ah, oh, there she goes. We do have bees marching into the box currently, but I know that there's a queen flying around here and it's really not uncommon for swarms to leave with multiple queens in tow. I know that the last time I looked in my hives, at least one of them had several capped queen cells ready to go, ready to swarm. They're definitely moving into the box. There's one queen flying around that may get a small following but I'm pretty sure there is also a queen inside the box here. That other swarm that we caught, they could easily have multiple queens as well. And either the queen that decides is gonna, she's gonna be dominant will kill that other queen, or they'll just cast out a secondary swarm from that original swarm. guys so it's been a few days and I wanted to update you on the swarm that we caught a couple days ago I did end up catching both swarms but the smaller swarm that flew kind of over towards that way they abandoned the queen and then these bees here the bigger swarm were actually quite aggressive my husband was across the way here working on our fencing project I'm not sure if you can see some of the wooden posts that he's placed, but he was getting stung in the face. He got one under the eye, one on the jaw, and then my pig, my barn is way over here, and I was over here working with my pigs, and I was getting an angry bee buzzing around my head. And being that far away from my apiary, the only reason that any bee would try to defend that far from their hive is if they're queenless. So I went ahead and assumed that the big swarm was queenless and I stuck the abandoned queen from the little swarm in here and then their attitude was completely fine. As you can tell, I'm in my winter jacket because it's 37 degrees out this morning. But this kind of temperature, it's kind of perfect to deal with my bees. They can't fly unless the temperatures are in about the low 50s. And so I'm gonna go ahead and move this hive away from our fencing project and in the regular apiary area. So I've got the front of the hive closed up here with this Bee Smart robber screen. I've gotta secure it a little bit tighter, but then I can put this strap around just the hive instead of the hive and the blocks and move them by hand. I can hear the hum of the bees inside. They can't, I don't think they can get out around that robber screen but I'll probably go ahead and put my veil on just in case. They are together in a nice tight cluster in there, keeping each other warm. And so inside, their muscles are warmed up and they do have the ability for short bursts of flight in order to attack me. So I am gonna put on my veil when I go ahead and move the box. And there's a little saying out there in the beekeeper world that when moving bees, you should aim to move them only three feet or three miles. And that rule is there because if you go ahead and move 
a hive more than three feet away, their GPS locator in their brain is so in tune to the surrounding area that they'll return to the exact GPS location that their original hive was in. And if you've moved their hive, say 10 feet or probably about 75 feet like I'm about to do, they will genuinely get lost. So really the goal isn't to make any of these bees lost for home. And that wrapper screen is going to play a role in them not getting lost. And I'll explain that in a little bit. This swarm is really only frames, box, and bees. They haven't had much of a chance to build up any like nectar stores or anything. So the box really shouldn't be too heavy. Nah, not at all. In general, bees foraging range is about three miles. So they know the area really well, three miles from home base. So if you move the hive more than three miles away from where they're familiar, they're gonna be lost anyways, and they'll do a behavior called reorienting. The bees will come out of the hive, they'll turn around, they'll look at their hive, and they'll do these little figure eight motions in front of the hive, getting a good look at it, figuring out where they are. This is their orientation flight. So moving a hive for three miles, they're definitely gonna be lost when they come out of the hive. They likely haven't been that far away from their hive before. It's gonna force them to reorient. So we're doing kind of the same thing here with this robber screen. I've only moved them about 75 feet. They know this area very well. This swarm actually came out of one of my hives. Right now the bees were just used to an open landing board and this robber screen, the entrance for it is actually right up here. I'm not gonna open it yet, but the bees are used to flying straight out to forage. This robber screen forces them to crawl up and then come out of this port up here. And when the entrance has been obscured like that, it also forces the bees to reorient to this space. So if you don't have a robber screen to do this with, you can actually put like a branch, lots of bushy leaves and things, like make them work to get out of their hive or something like that that obscures the landing board and makes them kind of work to get out of the hive. It forces them to turn around, figure out what's going on, and then they'll learn this space and come right back to the hive. When moving these two, you want to make sure that you're closing the bees up either at night or super early in the morning on a cold morning. In general, once the sun hits the front of the hives and it's a nice flying temperature day, say 50 degrees or more, they're gonna be flying as soon as the sun hits their hive. This particular robbing screen has ventilation, so don't forget that the bees are absolutely gonna need some form of ventilation, whether it's a screen bottom board or the screened cover here. And that way, when you've covered them, either at night or early in the morning during a cold snap like this, you ensure that you do have all of the bees at home. Especially in a swarm situation, all of the bees in this hive have the ability to fly and you don't want half of the hive to be out foraging when you move their hive. Those bees are definitely gonna get lost. I do still have this swarm over here. Ooh, they are flying. This hive is the swarm that I almost hit with my lawnmower. They are already flying this morning, so I'm gonna have to wait for another day to move them. If you missed the video when I caught this swarm, it's a really good video. I'll link it up here. 